So can you record studio quality audio from your home for under $1,000? The answer won't surprise you because the answer is yes. If it's your first time watching one of my videos, uh, thank you. Welcome. My name is Chris Cruz. Uh, I've been a radio DJ for about 18 years. I've been a wiki wiki DJ for like 15 years. Uh, so I spent a lot of my life in front of microphones and recording my voice. Now, full disclosure, I am not an audio engineer. I am not a sound engineer. I am not a radio engineer. Um, I just found some equipment and settings that work really well for me for under $1,000, so I wanted to share it with you. Also, real quick, I gotta thank my friends, uh, Big Tom Lawler and Tony Larino for helping me pick out the equipment that I needed and also some of the settings too. I love you guys and you're both very handsome. Okay, so back to the question. Can you set up a home recording studio and get studio quality audio or like broadcast quality audio for under $1,000? Yes, you can, and I'm literally doing it right now in front of you. And I'm sure a lot of you watching um, are using USB mics at home, maybe to record a podcast or audio books or like voiceover work, whatever. And those are cool. Those work really well. Um, I'm surprised by how good the audio quality is from some of those USB microphones. And they, you know, you can get a good one for like $100. But if you want to get to the point where you can do like professional voiceover work or like radio shows, like I literally do a radio show from right here in my home studio with this equipment, then you're going to need to set up similar to this and you're going to need to spend a little bit more money. But again, we are going to come in under $1,000. I'll show you how right now. So to record studio quality audio at home, you're going to need three things, an interface, a processor or a preamp, and a microphone. And then like, you know, some cables and stuff. So first, the interface. The interface is basically the box that talks between your computer and your microphone so you're able to record. Now again, if you're using a USB microphone, you don't need one of these, but if you're using more professional equipment, you're gonna need some kind of interface. So the one I'm using is the Focusrite 2i2. It retails for about $160. And I think this thing is freaking fantastic, man. The sound quality that comes out of it is really good. It's really clean. Um, it's got two inputs. So if you want to record yourself and a friend on separate microphones doing a podcast or like you playing an instrument and recording your voice separately, you can do that as well. And it's also got um, outs on the back to plug into studio monitors, which I obviously don't have yet. I'm working on that. Also, uh, I got a video coming up too of how I built this home studio. Um, and all these acoustic panels in here, if those even work, I built those myself. Do they even do anything? Um, and I'll also have a video coming up about how I built this thing behind me, my mega desk. Mega desk. Okay, so back to the setup. The mic processor that was recommended to me is the DBX286S. It retails for $220, and I think this thing sings, man. I love this thing. What a mic processor does, it gives you different uh, tweaks to make your voice sound different on the microphone. When you hear like a voiceover artist in a commercial, they get that really crunchy clean, crisp sound. That's because of the microphone processor and all the settings you put in there. Also, if you want to screenshot my settings, you're more than welcome to. I'll also put them in the description below if you want to copy my knobs, like literally setting for setting, you're welcome to do that. I don't care, steal away. And again, I know some engineering nerd or radio nerd in the comments is gonna be like, well, you need to spend $5,000 for this processor. With you. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that shit means. I don't know. I just bought this one, it's 220 bucks and it sounds awesome, so that's what I use. And the last thing you're gonna need, obviously, is some kind of microphone. The one I'm using here is an Octava MK319. I've had this probably for like a decade now. I bought it when I had no idea what I was doing recording at home. I would just plug it in my computer and it sounded like shit. But now with this setup, I think it sounds amazing. I love this microphone. Unfortunately, I don't think they make them anymore. I was trying to find them online and I found a couple on eBay for like three or $400. But this actually isn't the mic I recommend you buying if you were starting a home studio setup for yourself. The absolute standard in the radio world is the Electro Voice RE20. It retails for about $450. And if you go to almost any radio station on earth, that's what they're using. Personally for me, I'd go with the um, um, RE320, which is only $300 and it's black and it's really pretty and it's the color of my heart. So I like that. And honestly, they sound almost exactly the same. Again, someone's going to say, well, the car door, I didn't like, I don't know what that shit means. I don't know. It's just, I, that's the mic I like. I watched a bunch of reviews on them and they sound exactly the same to me, to my ears. Or lastly, um, a lot of radio stations and actually a lot of recording studios for like vocals and musicians use the Assure SM7B and that retails for $400. Any of those three would be absolutely killer in a home studio and almost overkill because they're all really good microphones. And then the last two things, you're gonna need some kind of windscreen for your microphone, basically to block the B's and P's so they don't pop. A lot of people use those styrofoam, they call them like mic condoms, they go over the top. I just think one, one, they're ugly, two, they start to smell really bad, and three, they kind of muffle your voice a little bit, so I don't really like those. This is a Stedman, it's all metal, it's about $70, which is a lot for a windscreen, but it lasts forever. It's really easy to clean. It doesn't get like that gunk and funk on it. I really like this thing. And then lastly, my uh, mic stand. A lot of times people will use like a, like a radio boom mic stand. Um, I just thought that took up too much room in my studio on Megadesk and I just didn't want to take up all that room. So I got this little one from Guitar Center for like 50 bucks. It's nice because I can kind of hide it away when I'm not using it. The bottom's really, really heavy so it stays put and I think it works fine. So that's my setup and my entire setup, if you did the math in your head, comes out at $900 
total. If you're going to spring for the most expensive mic we talked about, which was the um, RE20 for $450, you're still only at $950, which is still under $1,000. So, ha! Gotti, I did it. And that's my setup. Again, you can spend a lot more money and get better equipment, but I think we could agree. This sounds pretty damn good for under $1,000. I'm really proud of the setup. I love the way it sounds, and I wouldn't change a thing, except for maybe a new microphone like we talked about earlier. So I hope you guys uh, you know, got a couple tricks and tips out of this video. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel. Um, it helps my algorithms and also helps me buy stuff like this so I can do more reviews on you know, gear like this stuff today. Again, my name is Chris Cruz. Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you in the next one.